quotes that we just ha got from some of our early interviews. <laughs> they're, not, they're not highly, ins although I'm a positive psychologist, these are not highly positive <laughs> findings. Um, what's American citizenship mean? Well, we had that the other day in history. I forgot what it was. Uh, I'm not making these up, by the way. These are, these are real data. I mean, being American is not really special. I don't find being an American citizen very important. I don't want to belong to any country. It just feels like you're obligated to this country. I don't like the whole thing of citizen. I'm not saying all the kids sound this way, but this is definitely a theme. Um, um, now, here's one that's really grim, and I, excuse me for the language, but this is a, this is a real world out there, and I need to share this. This is for, this is from Oakland. Uh, this is from Oakland. You know, a, a, a group of kids that are very alienated, and one of this is a young woman uh, who said, "I think the U.S. government is like a drug dealer or a pimp uh, because the U.S. has different countries doing things for them. I guess I'm not a true as U.S. citizen or what America wants me to be because America doesn't even abide by their own rules or their own expectations." This is a very critical attitude towards this country, and not much of a sense of affiliation or attachment. Uh, which, uh, let me say, uh, I'm not at all against teaching kids criticisms of things that the United, in history of the things the United States have done wrong. Uh, but um, it, it's a little hard to see how, if that's, if that's the whole thing, or if that's the main thing that they're coming away with, how they're ever going to develop a sense of obligation. Uh, or, or even or civic duty or civic virtue in the old-fashioned sense of saying, yeah, there's something wrong with the country, but I want to improve it, uh, rather than I'm going to disassociate myself from it. Um, but, okay, so so we were, uh, I, I got a little discouraged when I, uh, when I asked them about American citizenship, but, and it's not all kids sound this way, but a lot, but the majority or either like this or like the earlier one, which is I don't know much about it. But I thought, you know, I'm always looking for something positive. Um, and I thought, well, what about some of these inspirational ideas or these kind of elevated ideas that uh, have been ideals um, for people for quite a while in this country? And I thought one would be the American dream. Now, I'm going to mention in a few minutes, the American dream itself has been criticized, especially by uh, by writers, the newspapers, the media, uh, intellectuals, and so on. And I'll, I'm going to get to that in a second. But here's what we found when we actually went out and asked teenagers about the American dream. And this is, this is pretty representative. Um, I hear American dream, and I think the chance to pursue your dreams, the daring to be whoever you want to be. I guess it inspires me that I can pursue my dreams, not just accept what's happening. Uh, this was a girl that was, I think, 16. Uh, and it's interesting, because she doesn't relate to it as getting two, B, two BMWs, or you know, having a fancy house, or getting rich quick, which I think it has been reduced to in the eyes of the media. I'll give you a couple of quotes about that later. But for, the kid, for a lot of the kids, it's actually closer to the original idea of the American dream, the way it was written about 100 years ago, or 200 years ago, which is, as a chance to find your own conscience, to pursue your own, to have the freedom to pursue what you think is right in the world and to pursue your own destiny, your own happiness. And materialism is part, is part of it. You want to be able to support yourself. But it was not just getting wealth and fame and celebrity and status. It was also pursuing the values of your conscience. That was the original American dream. And interestingly, the kids who are not necessarily being taught this are saying this, uh, which I think gives us a lot to work with. Um, and here's, a good, here's another example, uh, and this, this, is the, this blew me away. Last year, the history teacher told us the American dream was dead. I didn't believe that at all. The whole class was just sort of silent, so the other kids didn't believe it either. And he could tell that we didn't really agree with that. If we didn't dream, then we wouldn't be doing anything. We wouldn't be advancing as a society. So, you know, you still get, I mean, youth is still a time of idealism. Uh, here's another one, um, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of action. I do believe in that. People can be who they want to be. Now, you see, the kid, you got to wonder. I mean, it's, it, it, to, to me, it shows you how, first of all, how intelligent and how naturally idealistic young people are. And I don't know 
it's very early in this project. I don't know what they've been reading or seeing or whatever that's giving, giving them this kind of conception. But it's a very deep and profound conception and hopeful conception of, of what it means to be an American. And I think that as a basis for citizenship uh, is, uh, is at least one positive route in. Uh, and, and it ought to be encouraged, I think. Uh, I think the, as I said, the media, I'll give you a couple of quotes. Um, I just took this out of the, the, uh, the newspapers in the last like, few months. Uh, one expert was quoted, uh, this is a sociologist was quoted, anybody who builds a better mousetrap can get rich. The futile per pursuit of the American dream is the subtitle of a, of a popular book. The disappearing American dream is another subtitle of a, of a, of a very uh, well-known um, uh, scholarly book in sociology. And the American dream has died it is a quote from the, uh, the former president of Teachers College in New York City. So, you know, if this is what, um, if this is what we're communicating to young people, I, I'm suggesting it's not the most helpful. Uh, I mean, it's one thing to say, realistically, we need to work harder on social mobility. There are groups being left out. We need to work harder on our democracy. All of that's great. But to say that you know, there's no hope, or it's gone, or it's disappeared, or it's vanished, for a young person, there's a developmental issue here, which is that um, at this stage in development, you really want to encourage kids to uh, to build their capacity and build their skills and to, and to get energized and to move ahead and to be motivated. So they're not, you know, we, maybe we're a little egocentric if we just always communicate our doubts and reservations about the, about the democracy rather than our hopes and dreams uh, as well. Um, so that, that's my sermon for the day. Uh, um, now, uh, when we found, I, I said we would, I would give a couple of examples, um, I mean, excuse me, a couple of uh, points uh, that, we, that we've learned about educating kids. I put the word civic in, but actually this has to do with educating for purpose generally. What we found when we looked at the highly purposeful kids was that they had all certain com experiences in common. Uh, they had all seen somebody that they found inspirational in their life. Interestingly, uh, it wasn't usually the parent. Um, not, I'm not saying it never was the parent, but it was usually somebody, uh, a teacher or somebody, another relative or somebody they, they'd gone to camp with or a religious leader or somebody that had come into their classroom. I'll give you an example of that in a moment. But anyway. Somebody had been doing something that they admired. They also perceived something in the world that needed to change, uh, some problem that needed to be solved, poverty or, uh, or an earthquake or uh, you know, the earthquake in Haiti or, uh, or uh, somebody has cancer in my family and you know, the world needs cures. Some issue that needed to be addressed, uh, a deficit, something wrong, and then they, had to have a sense that they could contribute to this. They could actually do something. And then some experience where they actually got active in the civic domain, it would be civic, but, and I'll give you some examples in more general areas. A sense of community, when I say youth charter, I wrote a book once called The Youth Charter, and that was really about the idea that, is there a community of people around the young person that share values and high expectations and can communicate those to young people. And being part of that community, it doesn't have to be a huge community. It could be, a, it actually could be a family. But the more, the more people in the child's life who share high standards and strong values, the more likely the child is to find a path. And then schools can play a big role too. So I'm gonna close by giving you just a couple of examples of some of the young people who, um, who we took a look at as being highly purposeful. And I want to just uh, add a, a forewarning here. I'm not using these as examples of what every purposeful young person needs to look like, because the ones I've picked are really amazing kids. And by no means should, they, should these kids be used as an index of anything. Uh, but uh, it's kind of interesting to see how much kids can do, in, uh, you know, even very young kids, uh, at the most astonishing levels. And 
their path to purpose, it was identical to the kids that had more ordinary purposes, like the ones I quoted earlier, who wanted to be a teacher or who, or who wanted to be a filmmaker or something like that. Uh, these kids um, were uh, extraordinary, but they followed the same developmental path as, as ordinary purposeful kids. So here's the first one. It's born named Ryan, who we interviewed at age 12. Now, already at age 12, Ryan had created a foundation called the Ryan's Well Foundation to build drinking wells in Africa, in villages of Africa where they didn't have enough water to drink. By age 12, his foundation had already raised $2 million. And there he is on a visit to Africa with, with one of his, um, I forget what he called him, brother. He called him his brother, uh, a kid growing up in one of the villages that Ryan uh, had raised money to build the well for. Now, how did Ryan get to this point? At age six, in the first grade, six, he heard a presentation by a visitor to his school about how African villages did not, very many African villages didn't have their own source of water. And the moms had to lug water from the neighboring village and the hardships that entailed and all these stories about, what, about how hard it is to live life when you don't have enough water. And she must have given a very picturesque, uh, um, colorful view of it because Ryan really got inspired by this and kind of determined and especially when the teacher, when the visitor ended by saying, and it's really a shame because it only costs seventy dollars to build one of these things, and it's a shame that a village has to go without drinking water. So Ryan did a little calculation and figured he got an allowance, and guess what? He could save seventy dollars, which he did. Uh, and it took him actually about a year to save seventy dollars out of his allowance, but he put it in an envelope, went back to his first grade teacher. He was in second grade now. Said, "How can I find this woman?" Uh, she had an office down in the city where they w the school was. He called, made an appointment. Uh, I guess his mom took him down. He proudly gave the woman the envelope. And she said, Ryan, that's so great. I'm so moved that you did this. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of made a mistake. And um, it wasn't $70. It cost $2,000 to put it on these wells. So you would imagine, of course, the, 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 you know, you kind of imagine Ryan crumbling and saying, oh, I'll never try to help anybody again, or it's not worth the effort. But uh, you could probably guess that's not how the story ended up. Um, he he went, totally went in the face of it. It seemed to get him more charged up. He said, oh yeah, you know, I got $70 together. I can get $2,000 together. And he became a fundraiser. And he went, he, he knew he couldn't save $2,000 off of his allowance, but he, uh, he started twisting uh, arms and elbows and or whatever you do when you lean on people, relatives. He became a pain in the neck to everybody he knew and uh, uh, all his parents' friends. And it took him about six or seven months, and he managed to squeeze out of everybody he knew two thousand dollars. And this time, they did build the well. He brought the money in. The well got built. He got pictures of it sent. He got letters from the villagers thanking him. And uh, this only got him fueled up even more. And as I said, with the help of his parents, kind of kicking and screaming, he had to kind of drag them along. Because they said, Ryan, what about your homework? What about, your, what about my time? But he was a pretty determined kid. Interestingly, and here's an interesting thing. When all this started, he was known as a shy boy. Uh, he, was not, he was not seen as an aggressive, um, pushy kid at all. In fact, one of his little nicknames was Crying Ryan uh, when he was really young. Uh, he was even a little timid, but he became a forceful, quiet. But when we, well, he was, he was never loud when we interviewed him, but he was determined and quite forceful. And so he created a foundation. By, uh, he's now, this is four or five years later, foundations in 14 countries. It's, it's grown much larger than, um, uh, than $2 million. Uh, and um, at the same time, he's kind of a normal kid. He's you know still trying to make the hockey team and you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's one example, but again, astonishing and not, not it shouldn't be used as a measure for what purposeful kids should be like. Just very briefly, uh, um, 
this is a girl named Barbara Brown from Texas. She um, took a course in, uh, in school uh, that, I don't know, the course, some kind of science course where she learned about the water table. And um, she lived on a farm with her dad and way off in the backwoods of Texas, uh, South Texas, where she would see as a regular um, event her dad dumping the used tractor oil out on the field, which is what the farmers did. And she put two and two together in her head and thought water table, dumping oil, you know. That, and, and she learned about how important the water table was and how also how fragile it is. So she got together with a friend uh, and they created a little nonprofit group called Don't Be Crude. And they, long story short, they went before this Texas state legislature and they got, uh, they got a bill passed to distribute these recycling bins, which you, of which you see one, on every farm in Texas, which they are now. And you see her dumping her dad's tract oil uh, into that recycling bin. Again, her father was not that happy about this when she got started, but he, he got pulled along and he became a supporter. He, he got right into it and helped her out. And that is one of the things we found is that the parents are very rarely the source of the purpose or the uh, inspiration or the people that give the kid the idea. But it is pretty important for the parent to support and encourage it. That, that seemed to be pretty universal, that the parents of the purposeful kids did come along in the end and got, got behind it, even though they were not the source of the idea uh, in, in almost every case. Uh, here's Nina, um, who uh, um, grew up in a West Virginia mining town. Lots of people had lung cancer there, uh, not just because of the mining and coal dust, but because they smoked. And uh, she first started off as a daffodil girl, raising money in a supermarket by giving daffodils out. In the end, she started the junior chapter of the American Cancer Society, a na nationwide thing. Um, she also became a very uh, motivated kid. She's wearing a junior achievement badge. She became an athlete. She then decided that she wanted to herself work on this. So she enrolled in a, um, she got accepted to Harvard. Uh, and got a scholarship there uh, from a very, you know, uh, kid without means, uh, enrolled in a pre-med program. Uh, and again, it's dedicated, I, I don't know whether she'll, she'll go on and do cancer research, she might, uh, but she's also very astute on the uh, fundraising and political uh, aspects too. But again, a kid that's absolutely thriving. And then finally, I'll show you the one, this was the only one we had, uh, I'll just show you a picture of him, Michael. This was the only uh, guy that had some aspirations to do political leadership at all, but he does. Uh, and there he is, he's the head of a college uh, political group, and uh, there he is giving a speech, and that's what he looks like. And he got into it actually because of, a, interestingly, a personal concern. He, he's Jewish, he spent some time in Israel, he got very interested in the um, Israeli struggle, the Israeli-Palestinian issues and so on. So he really wanted to pursue that. He started, uh, I think he, um, he uh, uh, interned uh, for, I believe, Senator Lieberman, if I'm right. I may have that wrong, but I think I'm right about that. And then got into the idea that he himself could become a politician. So there he is. But we don't find many, many Michaels in this world. So that's... Um, that's why I have to say, uh, as I said, uh, my messages really are um, uh, threefold. Uh, one is we have a long way to go. Uh, there's no denying that. Uh, even purpose writ large, uh, purpose across all the different sources of purpose, um, there are 80% of the young people out there still looking. I think of those 80%, a good proportion of them are moving towards it. Uh, either by having high aspirations and then needing to develop more practical ideas or having a lot of good effort and then me needing to find meaning. But they still, have to be, they still have to be moved along and that really is where we can be of help in both, in both areas. We can help kids that have dreams find the actual ways to pursue those dreams by providing resources and information. And we can help kids 
who are so you know active and busy, uh, we can help them um, focus a little bit more and share with them some things that we find meaningful uh, in order for them to understand that. Because uh, I'll tell you, one of the interesting things is that everybody worries about stress among young people these days. The kids we found the most stressful are these kids that are very busy that have not found meaning. The kids that were highly purposeful could be 10 times as busy, and they were thoroughly enjoying what they're doing. So it's that lack of meaning that is the thing that I think we need to help on. Now, without a purpose and with purpose, and find ways to talk to these kids about that. It's harder, though. I won't underestimate that. So there's a long way to go in purpose generally. When you get to civic purpose, there's really a long way to go, because kids are just not, at this time, um, seeing, um, for whatever reason, they're not, they're not seeing civic leadership as a fulfilling uh, dream in life. And you don't need every kid to think that, but you need to have a few future Abe Lincolns, George Washingtons, whatever. You need to have some of those uh, in the pipeline uh, in, in any democracy. Uh, you don't want to just leave it to the, you know, the few people that only love power or something like that. You, know. you want to have good kids going into this. Um, but, uh, and then to end on a positive note, so we have a long way to go, but there's a lot to work with. And uh, you see examples of what kids can do, even at am amazingly early ages. These are real examples that have grown up in our time. Uh, so they've found ways to do it. And you hear what kids say about, when you talk to them about inspirational ideas or elevated, I elevated dream, the American dream, or, or I didn't even mention faith, spirituality, all of those, when you talk to kids about that, they begin to glow. They, they really have not lost their idealism. And so we have a lot to work with, and we have a lot of work to do. Thank you very much.